Thank you. So yeah, uh, hi guys. So I'm Tristan Larag from NVIDIA. I'm uh, managing a team of 10 people called DevTech, Developer Technology Relations. And we are, our job is to help people to take the best out of our GPUs. And so today, uh, what I'm going to show you is, is uh, something that we've developed essentially from Pascal. That's why I've put it in bold. Uh, Pascal Gautron did most of the work of the, co the, the coding. And what we're doing is we are uh, improving the um, uh, decimation by going through only through the GPU. And so what I want to share with you is the experience of uh, how to do things so that you accelerate the uh, decimation as much as you can thanks to the GPU. So what we are uh, contributing in, in through this work is that uh, it's a fully parallel um, processing uh, and uh, we build some topology. We um, preserve the attributes of the mesh to be consistent. Uh, we extract some metadata information and uh, all this is done through the GPU and it's done uh, through a um, almost like interactive way, depending on the amount of triangles you have, you have to process, like up to 50 million triangles, you can have uh, some quite interactive uh, uh, work. And all this has been done in, uh, in Vulkan so far. So uh, first, let's get through the, the start. How, what, what, what are we doing in order to kind of uh, simplify the mesh? We're, you, we're using, the, uh, we're using the, the typical, like, you know, the battle tested edge collapse decimation, which consists into removing some edges depending on their cost. And you can see on the right, when you just remove an edge, you simplify the mesh, okay? So that's what we're doing. It's quite simple. There has been some literature on that. Uh, I'm not going to in go into this in details, but the thing is that typically you calculate the cost for each edge you have a list of these edge and costs, and you sort them, and you take the cheapest one, and you work on it by remo removing the cheapest one. And then when you, re you remove it, obviously some neighbors are impacted, so you kind of uh, compromise the, the list, and you have to do the calculation again, because you have to remove those guys, recompute, re sort again, and, all, and so on. So, uh, in theory, with uh, typical algorithms, uh, this is a very iterative process, which is kind of uh, expensive, not very efficient. Uh, and the idea is that you, you do this again and again and again, up to a specific error threshold that uh, tells you, OK, I don't go further than that. Otherwise, I'm gonna, uh, the model is not going to be as good as I expect. So that's, uh, that's the basic algorithm on which we are we working. Some people are trying uh, tried to uh, parallelize this by clusterizing you know, the models, separating the model, and just like making things in parallel, and stitching them back together. So this is not something that we are, we are, we are doing, but I just wanted to mention that this is how it works. Uh, but now, let's get into some technical details that allows us to reach our goal through the GPU. The first thing is that when you have a mesh made of an index buffer, vertex buffer, the, the thing is that um, you may have some duplicates. And this is uh, an important thing because uh, you, you cannot uh, afford that, otherwise you're going to have some uh, arti uh, artifacts. So in this example, we're going to take those two uh, uh, vertices. And the idea is to walk through massively into the GPU through the vertices and analyze them and use what we call like a spatial hash map in which we're going to store these vertices and, uh, and do some uh, like sorting and analysis on this. So the first blue one, in this case, uh, we find it. The spatial hash map gives us a, a location into this uh, map. All good, because there was nothing before, so we just stored the information, which is kind of a, like a, the, the, sort of like the, uh, the, the descriptor of it. Then we do the same with uh, another vertex, which is the purple one. We find a place. The yellow one, we find the same exact place, so we don't change anything, because it, there's like a similarity in the space. And black one, same. Then we do another pass where we're gonna walk through the triangles and then simplify the mesh by checking this index and propagating in the index buffer this vertex. Instead of having three of those, we have one and we just modify the index buffer. So we deduplicate the, the mesh. We're going to do the same, but in some situations we have some different attributes. For example, we have uh, UVs which are different, like UV islands and so on, different attributes, and we cannot always collapse vertices. However, we need to have this topology information. 
In this case, what we're doing is more or less the same, you know, uh, uh, putting the vertex in the uh, spatial hash map. Uh, and remember, this is happening in the G GPU. That's why there is an atomic operation. All this is massively ha happening together, all together. So there's like a, some competitive actions going on. That's why we use atomics. And then uh, we have another vertex going on, getting stored into the hash map. A second one. But even though it's like in the same location, now when we want to resolve the index information, we have, we're going to have a third buffer, index buffer, which is in fact the location index buffer that kind of differentiates from the fact that the index buffer originally is also uh, taking into account the fact that there's different attributes. But in this case, uh, we have to kind of uh, draw a line and, and make sure that we don't lose information. So now we have um, more information about this mesh and we also can tag sometimes which vertex is in between two uh, uh, discontinuities because attributes are different. So it is important for later that we need to keep track of this. Okay, now we have this uh, deduplication done. We need to kind of uh, work on the connection between triangles and vertices. So we're gonna explode this example. And now the, the, the whole thing here is about to, how can we connect this vertex, the blue vertex, with all these triangles which are using it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a vertex with a specific field which connects to the last triangle being, using it. So we're going to walk through all these triangles massively, again, in the GPU, and we're going to, in this case, for example, we're going to end up in this uh, first triangle. What we're going to do is again, we're going to link this triangle information index to this vertex and have the vertex point to it. Then we arrive to an, another triangle, what happens here is that this triangle also connects to this vertex. And then we're going to exchange, again, in the hardware with the atomic operations, we're going to exchange the uh, index of the triangle and put it in the vertex. And then we are going to point from uh, the, the triangle is going to point to the previous one. And so on, like this. And we're going to have a chain list of triangles connected to the vertex. And this is going to happen like massively in the hardware for every vertex and triangles. Okay, so now we have the uh, relation, uh, the duplication. We have the triangle information related to the vertex. Now we want to work on the edges. So let's explode uh, this example by just separating them. And now the idea is also to use again uh, the um, uh, the hash map system. But instead, now we're going to create a, a key made of the indices of those two vertices, uh, mostly, essentially we take the, the lowest index value on the right and the highest one on the left, and we're gonna access the hash map and figure out if there's anything or nothing. We store it, and if there's nothing, we're gonna add this edge to a specific edge list. And we keep, keep up like this again massively on the GPU, and we're going to find out sometimes that there is another edge, which is exactly the same. So we find the slot, and it's already there. So what, what, the, what happens? What happens is that there's nothing to do because it's already there. So we uh, simplified the uh, topology information. But sometimes you can end up having a new edge, like this example. So the hash map is going to store it, and we're going to add it to the edge list. But also, you can, not, uh, you can uh, in another pass in the hardware, we're going to be able to uh, figure out that this edge maybe is only invoked one time, so which is an, an interesting information for the, 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 the topology. And so we're going to tag it as being an edge in, in the mesh. OK, so this is to show you that uh, we are massively executing all of this in the GPU in a few passes. Uh, and same for the edges. This updates the edge counter, which is the size of the edges, edge table. Uh, the, the, the edge table increases along the time. And same is true for the triangles, uh, like trying to connect with, for the linked list uh, with the vertex, vertices. It's happening massively parallel, in a massively parallel way. So what do we have now? We have vertices with some edge, like uh, uh, discontinued flags uh, and, and so on. We have the la last triangle index uh, for each edge 
hash index. For the uh, edge, we have uh, some a cost for uh, the length for, for the edge. We have, uh, of course, the vertices. And for the triangles, we have information about the previous triangles, which is this, this linked list I mentioned uh, that allows you to connect them. And we, of course, we have the edge information. So we are working, we're going to work with that. And now, the question is, how do we compute the cost of the edge to decide which are the edges that you should collapse? So we have to take into consideration the fact that uh, on top of uh, uh, having an edge cost dep depending on the size, we want also to avoid situations like pathological situations like this one, which is, for example, elongated triangles. It's not a good thing to have. Also, um, uh, high valence for vertices, it's not something we want uh, in most of the shapes. So as soon as we know that we will end up there, we'll, we'll avoid. And also like uh, uh, sharp uh, shapes like this on the right, uh, we want to preserve this information. So this will impact the edge cost. Ultimately, what we want is to have like some sort of isotropic uh, triangles. Uh, it's way better most of the time. And also we want to preserve, preserve, preserve the overhang. So that's the, the goal. In order to do this, we, we found an interesting uh, trick. Uh, we are using the hardware ray tracing of NVIDIA. <laughs> uh, and uh, what we do for each vertex of the mesh, we are going to kick off 128 uh, rays, so 2 times 64 rays on, for a hemispheres. And we are going to kind of scatter those rays, which is like 2 to 5% the size of the model. And we are going to see how they hit the neighbors, like the shape itself. And the more you, you hit something, the more you, you have a curvature. If it's flat, you hit less. And you can see like with artificial colors that we end up having this sort of a, a, a map of where are the, situ the things where you need to, be, to, to preserve the information. And if an edge uh, uses these vertices, then uh, it, it may be something that you want to keep and not collapse. We also have this um, important map we can import from other, other applications because we know that sometimes other applications are doing a good job on that, so you can also import that. And so now, where do we stand here? We have the edge, the, most of the time the edge length that is important for deciding if you want to collapse it or not. The result of collapsing, does it give us a high valence or not? That's another criteria that could impact the cost and increase the cost of the edge so that we may not want to uh, collapse it. Uh, or uh, do you, uh, we want to also use the importance map or the, um, the uh, curvature information that we just gathered uh, thanks to the hardware. So this is arbitrary choices. We can do more, like uh, uh, quadrics and so on. There's plenty of criteria. It's like cooking here. I mean, there's no strict rules to decide what kind of decision take for edge collapsing. But it's quite flexible. So now, very important, how do we find the candidates, the edges that we can collapse, and the ones we should never collapse, OK? So in this case, what we have is we have like borders of a mesh, and we have some uh, discontinuities between two UV islands or two different attribute systems. And you can see that there are different use cases, like the red and yellow and blue. And so from there, you can, you can have some rules. Those rules, I'm not going to get into details, but the thing is that if you have like the combination of these situations, you should never collapse, because otherwise you're going to um, compromise the model. But sometimes, at least you have some interesting use cases that where you're safe to collapse edges. And when you identify those uh, inform edges, you're good to collapse. And this information has been gathered before when you, uh, we, we got the, uh, the uh, uh, topological information. Now, very important, when you are doing massively parallel um, decimation, you have to make sure that there is no uh, uh, conflict. And that's why some people worked on clustering the, the mesh. And we found an interesting way uh, to do that with the hardware. In this case, at least, let me show you that there's no way you can work together on those together because they are conflicting. They are, if one collapses, it's going to compromise the other one. But sometimes you have situations like this one, the blue one and the orange one, they, they can work together because they are not interacting. The yellow one 
is a problem with the blue one because it's uh, sharing some triangles. So the, the whole point is that, in fact, each edge should f find a way to, to conquer a, a surrounding set of triangles and tag them and say, that's mine or not. And so there is a sort of a competition going on in the hardware. And how do we do this? Well, we're going to use, again, atomic operations, which is this atomic mean operation, and we're going to create a descriptor. And this descriptor is a sort of signature of the edge, which is made of the index of the edge and uh, the cost of the edge. And this edge uh, is going to kind of propagate its value to the uh, uh, surrounding triangles and store this value to the tri triangles. And you can imagine that this is, going to ha this is going to happen in massively parallel way. So every edge is going to do this, and they are going to compete. And because we're using atomic mean, some are going to win, some are going to lose. And then after that, each edge is going to query the result and check, OK, uh, ask the triangles, is it my value? And if all the triangles give you back your descriptor, then you know that your island is safe and you can collapse because you're not conflicting with others. So uh, in this way, uh, you naturally create some islands of processing without conflicting with others. Okay? So once you've done that, you want to collapse. This is very easy then. You just take the vert vertex coordinates and you just compute, in this case, the midpoint of the edge and you r update the vertex buffer, nothing else. And why is it enough? It's because if you remember in, at the beginning, we have this uh, uh, deduplication. So in the next pass, we will be able to simplify the model. So there is no need now to, to, to optimize the model. We can have duplicates, OK? We have to do the same for uh, discontinuities like this, because sometimes, as I say, the attributes are not the same. So um, we will have to do the same, the collapsing, but by taking into account the fact that we cannot collapse exactly the same because we have to preserve the attributes that are not exactly the same. But anyways, this is the same process. So what we get here is uh, all of these stages. It's about 19 GPU passes. It's all in the GPU, OK? Nothing CPU. Uh, you, all, you do all of this. And when you en end up at the end, you arrive at the end, you, you, you want to repeat this operation again and again up until you converge and you don't have any more edges to collapse because the cost is too high. So that's how you get it. And that's, what it, that's why it's interactive, because you see the things happening and converging, and it's at uh, human scale. I mean, you can, just, you, see, you can see it going on. So I'll give you an example here. In one third of a second on a, a RTX uh, 390, you, two million triangles can be collapsed into uh, 28K triangles. And you see it coming. You can very much interact with the parameters and try again. Here you have another example of uh, like a 17 seconds because it's a 62 million triangles and quite aggressive uh, uh, remeshing because it's uh, something like 100K triangles. Um, and uh, I mean, it's still acceptable. Uh, here is an example of um, on, the, on this crab uh, shape uh, the, 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 the curvature. Uh, you can have some artificial colors to have an idea uh, how it goes. Uh, here is another example where uh, we are then applying on this crab. So it was like in this case, it's like 15k meshes, and then. We apply on this uh, decimated crab uh, mesh, uh, we apply this so-called micro mesh, which I encourage you to check uh, on GTC talks from NVIDIA. Uh, it's not the purpose of this also. I'm not going to talk about it. But the idea is to kind of uh, regenerate from the hardware some uh, micro triangles. And so uh, with displacement information that we can gather, you can recreate that, and you end up like uh, rendering 3 million triangles uh, mesh uh, out of the 15K base mesh. All right, so future work. Uh, we want to solve some uh, chi junctions. <coughs> we want to solve some mesh bending issues. Uh, of course, work on the memory reduction. There is always a way to, to do things better. Uh, improve the performances. Uh, it's been written in, in uh, Vulkan. Uh, we would like to use CUDA also, have a solution for 
non-graphics API. Uh, and uh, also we have this uh, uh, displacement thing, which I, I, if I have a bit more time, I can speak about it. Uh, but uh, typically, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sort of a bounding box, like a prism, uh, min and max uh, for displacement computation, uh, there's something we can do here. A uh, few numbers about performance. Um, so the most of the, the, the two examples, like the reef crab and the dragon, you know, they are like something like two million triangles. Uh, you need 400 megabytes, something like this, uh, of a video RAM. Uh, and uh, for the most complex one, like the 62 million triangles, you have like you need one gigabyte of memory uh, in the in the graphic card. So it's it's still uh, easy uh, to to work with without being in trouble. Um, so now, because if I understand we have more time, uh, I'd like to also point out the fact that through this process of, of uh, decimation, what is interesting sometimes is to keep the history of the decimation. When you remove vertices like this, and so on, and so on, you can see that you simplify the mesh, but how about you keep track of the uh, killed vertices and how are they connected to the ones surviving. And this is, it can be very interesting for, for various processing. So how do we do this? We're going to have for each vertex uh, an in information of the link, uh, information of the index of the vertex that survived. So in this case, the one that got killed is going to have a, a link to the one that survived the decimation. And if you keep going like this, you end up having a linked list of vertices that dies, died for the benefit of the one that survived. And so you have a history of the whole decimation and you keep, it, keep track of it. So why is it important? So first of all, it's important because you may be able to have a, an information about how deep the decimation happened in the mesh locally. You can have the artificial color re rendering, you can have an information on how the mesh got uh, changed. But also for us, for the micro mesh, and again, I encourage you to have a look at uh, the talk about this at IGTC NVIDIA, uh, you can evaluate with all the vertices, you can evaluate the, the position and, and adjust properly the size of the, uh, the, the shell that surrounds the, the mesh to do the displacement. And that's what, what you see here. The, the, the crab has this sort of a, uh, a shell in which inside you, you will have displacement. So um, that's pretty much, I, I hope it was not too fast because it's a lot of details, but uh, I questions, marks, uh, I, in small because I have to confess that I did not do the whole job because I managed the team and uh, Pascal Gautron is the one who made all this work. So uh, you can ask me questions later, but uh, you can also ask Pascal by email. That's why I, I wrote that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Tristan.